everyone, this is Gilbert Jalot. I'm talking to you here from Tufts on Tax, where all your tax issues and uh, questions are answered right here with Mr. T. Scott Tufts. He is the master and the expert when it comes to taxes and tax law. Of course, you can call us always at 877-647-7887. Again, that number is 877-647-7887. Or you can email him at stufts at cplspa.com or uh, stufts at cplspa.com. You can always visit our website at cplspa.com and check his profile. You have all the information you need right there. Hello, Scott. How are you? Good to be with you. Good to be with you, too. And today we are uh, tackling a different topic, one of the forms, which is 1065. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be talking about the instructions for that form. So why the instructions? So there's like a, a day when under extension, um, a, a LLC tax return, this form 1065, the entity return is due. That's today mm -hmm. under oh, okay. extension. And then your personal return under extension wouldn't be due until October. Oh. Right? So right now is a big time day because today you get a entity that has to file a return that has K-1s that go out to the owners. And then those K-1s are then gathered in by the owners who then use that to prepare their personal tax return under extension. Now, you might be asking yourself at that point, wait a minute, if the LLC return with K-1s isn't being prepared back in March, mm -hmm. did any of the owners file their returns or did they have to get an extension also because they're waiting on that K-1? Oh, I never thought about it that way. So let's back up. So okay. you get to the beginning okay. of the year, you go to the accountant, you give them all your stuff for an LLC return, and they say, look, this is complicated, it's a mm -hmm. mess, or whatever, we're going to have to get an extension. Okay? Okay. Well, then what do the owners do? Do they then automatically have to get an extension? Why so one of the owners says, I don't want to do an extension. I, I don't want mm -hmm. an extension. I, Just I want to file. file my return. Mm -hmm. Can they? What do you think? Can they? Well, they can but they okay. don't have a K-1, so what do they do? What do they do? Exactly. So I have many people say, well, I couldn't file my return because I didn't get a K-1. That's actually no. not true. Oh. You can actually file a Form 8082. 8082. Oh, we talked about exactly. that Exactly, and on that form, it allows you to estimate what that K-1 is going to look like Okay. later in the year when they finally get around to doing the return. Okay, so approximately would right. be... Right. Unless uh, your operating agreement says, thou shall not do that. Ah, uh, so it's possible to do it unless it's specified... Against the agreement you mm -hmm. reached with mm -hmm. your other partners because okay. they might get nervous that if you file that 8082, uh, putting down an estimate and it's wrong, you're going to mess everything up. Mm -hmm. Why, you can't go back and, and change it? Sure. Oh. Yeah, but then you do what? An amended return? Mm -hmm. And that's certainly possible. Okay. But you're going to want to, you know, think that through, correct? Okay. And my big thing is, you know, are you in communication with the persons doing the entity return? Mm, okay. Right? Or are you kind of doing your own thing? I uh, see. You would think you need to communicate. Of course, hey, right? Of course. Hey, where's my K-1? Well, we're not going to get it mm -hmm. done. You're going to have to do, you're going to have to wait under extension. And you're going to have to then say, well, so then I have to wait. And then let's say they say, well, if you file, you may have to amend. Mm -hmm. Correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But that's kind of the thought process that needs to go into place here. And what I'm trying to get to is we want our audience to know that the instructions walk you through it, believe it or not. And courts, when these disputes get into court or, you know, there is a dispute, the courts will actually look to the instructions because they walk you through and say, you need to first communicate with the entity and re inquire about your K-1. This mm -hmm. is the same thing as if it's wrong. Remember we've talked about that? Mm -hmm. So if your K-1, you look at it and go, this isn't right. You have to, an obligation to go back to the entity and say, hey, can you fix my K-1 mm -hmm. to make a correct, a corrected K-1, correct? Yeah. So you're, 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 you've got to understand that you've got to realize that these instructions are important yeah. because they bring you together to try and resolve a difference before you file that 8082. 
But I'm listening to you, and it sounds like a lot to deal with, and it's, it's going to become a mess kind of easily versus just to wait. Right. But if under extension, you can't get it resolved – Right. Mm. What happens if you're working on a return mm -hmm. and it's due today? Yeah. And you know that there are penalties that would apply if you don't file timely mm -hmm. and you can't nobody can agree on the return. Ugh. Oh, what God. happens? What what happens? Well, usually someone takes the lead, mm -hmm. files it, and like, then the others have to dispute it. But who oh. has the authority? Depending on what the happens agreement? if we're fifty fifty? Oh, okay. I was going to say, depending on the agreement, Who is it 50 or... I, oh, I, I don't know. Is it both? I don't know. So they have to write that. Well, maybe if it's my accountant who I'm working with who's doing the return... You have the authority. I guess, even though we're equal. So what's this? How would you <laughs> like that? How would you like this? if I tell my accountant, prepare it the way I want you to prepare it? Mm. He Gilbert's an idiot. Gilbert doesn't know anything. So let's prepare the return the way I want it, and we'll slip little numbers in there. Gilbert doesn't look at a thing. He'll just mm -hmm. hand it to his H and R block person, and they'll just hit send. And Gilbert, so you Gilbert tell, won't even know. You it. So tell, let's hide some numbers in there, mm -hmm. and just don't even worry about it. And that your partner. Gilbert oh yeah, Gilbert's an idiot. He'll never <laughs> notice, and he'll just hand it to his accountant. And meanwhile, we're winning. <laughs> but he would discover that later on. Who? Your h &R block person? Gilbert will No, Gilbert doesn't, Gilbert's not going to notice anything until like five years from now when it finally matters. And then what's great is then Gilbert will get all hot and heavy. He'll go hire a lawyer, uh -huh. and then he'll scream about it. But in court, we'll beat him because for five years, he was okay with it. Oh, wow. Because Gilbert didn't act promptly. Gilbert was Folks, along don't with take things. these ideas seriously. <laughs> don't follow these. <laughs> Right, but 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 doesn't that doesn't that alert you to the idea that you can't bury your head in the sand? Yeah, you yeah, can't you have to be alert. You have you, to know. Yep, exactly. and you and you see something, mm -hmm. you got to you got to look at it. And all these instructions that are multiple pages with lots of fine print, right? Do you read them or do you just kind of or even don't even know they exist or just say I don't have time? So if they don't have or time, or even better. I trust my accountant will read it for me and, and alert me mm -hmm. to any problem. And if he doesn't, you're in So trouble. under that situation, let's say that I have the accountant. Mm -hmm. He's going to do the return. Mm -hmm. You don't have anyone. Mm -hmm. And I, the accountant says, I'll do Gilbert's return also. Oh, that's messy. Yes. <laughs> Especially if after years you discover that there were positions on that return that were Treating More in you favor less than to you 50. than me. Yeah, we may be 50 50. Yeah. But I get what I want. Yeah. And if On the hurts, surface, we're and 50 if it, Yeah, and if it hurts you, sorry. Mm -hmm. And uh, here I am, I'm right. thinking. You or know. you play chickens on the road and you see who blinks first. Because mm -hmm. we're 50 50, right? So we can't decide anything unless we both say okay. So. It's tax time. It's filing day. Mm -hmm. And I look at Gilbert and I say, well, you know, Gilbert, we we'll just won't file unless you, you know, it's mm -hmm. up to you. Wow. I'm not worried a bit. I, I, I don't care anything about what happens on my return, but maybe you're going to worry about it. Why don't you go hire a lawyer and pay them and do that in the next two hours before we have to file? Wow. So basically... <laughs> We have to really read the instructions. And if we can't read these instructions while we're doing this, it's even hire worse than that. a lawyer but like here, you. But it's even worse than that. What's your blueprint when you operate as a partner or mm -hmm. in a member in an LLC? Mm -hmm. What does your agreement say? Does that agreement protect you? Does it give you the opportunity mm -hmm. to call an emergency meeting? Mm -hmm. Does it have procedures on how to contest a return yeah, amicably in-house? In does it have procedures that... You know, one of you can wave a flag and say, you know, um, hello. Mm -hmm. Or did wow. you just sign it and no, didn't worry about it? So what's our message to the audience? I think I think it's, I, you know, I recognize everything moves fast in the world. Mm -hmm. Everything goes fast. We all are not perfect. Maybe you sign an agreement and then you look back at it and go, gosh, I, I you know, whatever. You've kind of got to go back to these before you speak. You need to know what you're talking about. 
And before you speak, you need to look at instructions, you need to look at the return, you need to look at the K-1, and you need to look at your operating agreement. And you need to make sure you know what the rules of the road are and then operate with, if you, as much as possible within mm -hmm. that framework to then decide what your game plan is going to be. So basically, be on top of it and read all of that and make sure yeah. on your, you know it. And if you can't, hire someone like you right. to follow up with this and be on your backside. Exactly. So right now our message is, you have a K-1, look at the four corners. And if there's anything inside the four corners of that document mm -hmm. that doesn't look right, be proactive and figure out is it right or not. And if it's not, try and fix it. And if, it's not, and if you can't, then you got to look at the 8082 form. Yes, that's a good advice. Uh, you heard him, folks. Uh, please read the instructions. Follow everything. Make sure you're on top of it, like uh, mm -hmm. Mr. T. Scott said, and hire an, a professional if you really can't do all these things. Or figure it out. Or figure it out. And then last but not least, if you don't get a K-1, but you should have, you cannot just sit there. You've got to look at 8082 as, you're, as saying, this is for the K-1 I didn't get. Exactly. Okay. Well, there you go. You can call us at 877-647-7887 or email him at stufts, stufts, at cplspa.com. You can visit the website, cplspa.com. You can see all the information on the banner here uh, on YouTube, or you can uh, um, uh, call us at 877-647-7887. Thank you, and we'll see you next time.